Ignition sequence start. Six, five, four, three, two, one, zero. Liftoff. We have a liftoff. Hey everybody, this is the Digital Asset Investor. I'm giving myself a little shave here. You know, when I was growing up, my father, he always shaved with a with one of the regular like Gillette razors and he would put the shaving cream on and he all, and he did that all that when I was growing up, that's how he shaved and I think he still does to this day. Well, about a year ago, my wife had been begging me to try electric razors cuz that's what her dad did. And so I decided I would try it after doing what my dad had done for years. And the second I did it, it was a game changer and I ordered one for nothing off of Amazon. And from ever since then, I've been using an electric razor. So sometimes I will sit here in my chair and I will actually shave right before I speak to you guys. But today I figured since in my last video, you had had, you had to listen to a tornado siren that I figured you could take a little bit of a razor uh, as well. Okay, here we go. This is starting this video out with um, Coin Trends. Uh, at Coin Trends is the uh, name of this Twitter handle. Top 10 mentions on Twitter in the last hour. Um, this and it's this is just the last hour. Bitcoin, Ethereum, XRP. That's no surprise. I was kind of surprised that Chainlink has has made has surged like it has. I'm, I'm thinking maybe I need to look harder at Chainlink. I've had a lot of people talk to me about that. Um, I think that Cardano should be right here. And XRP should be here. And Bitcoin should be here. And maybe Ethereum back here. But <laughs> so far, this is the way things are on Twitter. Okay, now this is interesting, folks. This is a tweet from Frank Chaparro. Interesting draft of the so-called keep big tech out of finance act being floated around clearly tied to facebook ambitions so you can see that obviously there is a big freak out uh, going on in washington dc about um the facebook libra coin now um i believe that this is all so good for ripple I think that I do not think that it is it is a coincidence that that Ripple is never spoken of, XRP is never spoken of. I believe it's intentional. I think that there that this is much bigger than than even I thought, and I believe that all of these people know about it. And I'm going to prove to you that one of the major powerful people know about it. That I didn't even realize this, but I'm going to show you in a minute. Um, but this is where it gets interesting. So this is basically um, a piece of legislation that's been put out there to keep so that big, no big tech companies can cr create their own digital asset. And the, the reason is because the banks don't want the, the government does not want the banks to have competitors. <laughs> that's the bottom line. Um, and all all these government, the politicians, they who, who do you think uh, pays? Who do you think lobbies them? to do this stuff, the banks, the Federal Reserve, all of it's, it's all one thing. Okay. Well, um, look at this now they've even got, it says just in any firm that issues a digital asset that is also a big tech company would face huge fines, $1 million per day of such violations. So if they created their own digital asset, they would be fined a million dollars for every day that that digital asset was in existence. I wonder if they would accept that digital asset as payment. <laughs> That'd be funny. Um, okay, so now now I'm going to show you that they do know about Ripple. It's just and and they intentionally do not say anything about it, and that has fascinated me for a long time. But it's not not just government people. It's also people uh, people who are owners in Ripple, like Barry Silbert, Mike Novogratz. These guys. The only time they will ever talk about Ripple or XRP is if they are asked about it. And then they'll downplay it and go on to the next topic as fast as possible. Okay, well this is from Neil Duncan, at Neil J. Duncan. Hey XRP community, check out the short video compilation I put together. How much does Jerome Powell, Chair of the Federal Reserve, really know about XRP? Was he being up front in the U.S. Senate hearing yesterday? Let me know what you think. Um, so, 
Here's his video. Now, I want to show you this. I'm going to show you the I stopped it at this point right here. But you should go and subscribe to Neil uh, Duncan. I'll subscribe to him as well. Subscribe to Neil Duncan and, um, and support him because he put together a really good compilation of what went on with the Fed, the Fed chair this week and then some other things about Ripple, such as this. Um, remember, Jerome Powell, in, a, in an early part of this video, when he's, he's being interviewed by this, <laughs> that's funny, Mr. Crapo. <laughs> that's hilarious. I'm sure that's Crapo, but I like, but Crapo is a lot funnier, so we'll go with that. So he was being interviewed by Mr. Crapo, um, and he, here is um, the Fed chair right here, um, and he does not, uh, hey, by the way, I tweeted out this week, there was a coffee cup in front of him when he was on the, at that Senate, the, the committee hearing, and it had an X on it. I was not in any way saying that that had anything to do with XRP. I, I just pointed it out because I thought it was really ironic. That's kind of crazy that he just happens to have a coffee cup with X on it. But I did not in any way, I, I did not mean to infer that that meant he, he put that there intentionally. That's not what I was saying at all. I just thought it was interesting. But anyway, so this guy's asking the Fed chair, are there any other cryptocurrencies that you know of, anything that's in the works going on right now? Anyway, so this guy, all of a sudden, Ryan's again, in this video, he shows you Ryan's going. And then he gets to this, Governor Jerome Powell, January to, Sept January to September 2017 calendar, um, Tuesday, April 18th, 11 a.m. to 12 p.m., meeting with Ryan Zagone of Ripple. And that is the guy that's in charge of, of regu regulation, the regulations with Ripple, I think. I think that he's, uh, yeah, Director of Regulatory Relations. Um, but so Jerome Powell doesn't just know what Ripple is. He knows Ryan Zagone. And when he was speaking in front of that uh panel, Mr. Crapo asked him that question. Wait a minute. Maybe it was Mr. Capo. Let me, I want to go back and look. I still think this is funny. Yeah, it's Mr. Crapo. We're going with it. So anyway, now, now we know, and then he's got some other interesting things. This is when he, uh, Ryan's again, pretty much demolished these two Bitcoin maximalists. It was pretty awesome. Okay. So they all know about Ripple and XRP, but they don't talk about it. There's a reason that they don't talk about it. And I think it's a huge, massive reason. Okay, Cryptopolis, at Cryptopolis underscore X. Inspired by, by Neil, he's, he's inspired by the guy that did the video compilation that I just showed you. Uh, he said, this is not just an analogy or a flight of fancy or what if. Mrs. Lagarde is laying out the, X, the plan for XRP. Now, folks, I'm going to say his name again because you need to, this is a two-part video. Even if you're not on Twitter, go on Twitter today, find this video, and watch it. You, She literally, without saying Ripple or XRP, is telling you what is about to happen. If you don't watch any other video, you can turn my video off and go watch these two videos that he just put up. This is amazing. I mean, it really is. It, it, it'll, it will excite you about your XRP holdings. I can promise you that. Um, part one, and, and this is just Christine Lagarde speaking. It's a one minute, 51 seconds, and then the second part is two minutes. And I will tell you what, folks, it'll blow, it's, this one will blow your mind. All right. Um, I should just name this video the Chino, Chino Patel, or maybe I should call it the Chino Patel uh asset investor today because this guy pumped out a lot of information um, at Chinu, Chinu Patel 29. Um, first, he sent me this John McAfee tweet. I, I'm loving covering John McAfee recently. The Fed warns Facebook. Trump, Trump warns everybody. The SEC files lawsuits. The fear of crypto is striking home. Yes, it is. And then he sent me this article, U.S. Uh, SEC uh, acceptance of crypto is a question of when, not if, claims Barry Silver. Just wanted to read you his quote. He was interviewed uh, with the Internet uh, Intercontinental Exchange. The CEO spoke about how SEC of the United States had a tough job managing a multitude of assets. Here's what he says. The SEC has a really difficult job right now. There are 70-year-old there are rules that they need to adhere to. 
and they come to around 34 regulations. Despite this, they have been thoughtful and methodical. And from all the meetings and announcements from the organization, it is clear that it, it is a question of when, not if. Folks, when, not if. All right. Um, then uh, he sent me this too from uh, Jack the Rippler. Ripple Executive unveils strategy to transform cross-border payments, boost XRP, and grow blockchain ecosystem. Um, and this is a Daily HODL article. Um, and it's, this is the executive is um, Vanessa Alexandria P Pastrito. Um, she is um, Director of Strategic Growth at Ripple's investment arm, Spring. And here's what she says. From an industry standpoint, we believe that there's going to be multiple be multiple ledgers that will be used in different verticals. We don't think it's just going to be one to serve them all. So when we take a look at different investments we'd like to make or people we'd like to partner with, we are looking at the, at the infrastructure layer and seeing who also has the alignment of values and view of interoperability. And then down here it says, and then of course payments. We also have someone on our, on our team dedicated to seeing where XRP for payments can be of use in working with different merchants as well as consumer platforms and apps to see where there could be a good opportunity for us out there. So what they're doing is they're looking for use cases um, and, and they're going to they're gonna find more and more use. They're going to create use cases or and form partnerships to create use cases. Okay, um, and, and then I saw this, and this is important too. He, uh, this is from Curious Wang, the uh, CEO of BitTrue. Just want to keep everyone posted on this. We are working with CoinMarketCap for listing and preparing some more info for them. This is big, folks. I'm, I'm scooping up BTR here and there, and I'm doing it just because it's so new and it hasn't even been added. I mean, coin market cap gets, I think, billions of hits every every day, maybe, or, or it, it, whether it's day or week, I don't know. But they get a lot of traffic, and so it's a big deal when when a digital asset gets listed. And you can be assured he's going to be listed on other exchanges as well. So that's a good opportunity. I still say, um, for myself, I'm doing it. XRP Dave at the Davy ninety two sent me this. Exchange ending support for Bitcoin. Unfortunately, there are a number of limitations and design flaws unique to Bitcoin that make it an impractical substitute for cash, including high transaction fees and long confirmation times for buyers. This is PayFast. Um, it says, unfortunately, there are, and that's what I just read you. But anyway, bottom line is they wanted to Bitcoin to be a part of their solution for payments, and it just didn't work. I will repeat, I've said this before, Bitcoin is not going to be used for anything other than a store of value. I do believe that it will, that it will, I, I believe that the powers that be around Bitcoin recognized that at some point, and that's when they came up with the drop gold campaign and all of this. Um, and I, I believe that, that it will survive, but it will survive as a store of value only. I'm the digital asset investor. I'm not an investment advisor. This is for entertainment purposes only. Please subscribe and hit the like button. And tell your friends and family that the digital asset investor uses an electric razor. Thanks for listening.